Hey, what's up, guys? It's your boy, DJ J. Steezy. And DJ Jedi. And we're the Last Dope Podcast. Today's special guest, we have Carla, also known as Cake, Cake by, by Carla. Carla. Yeah. <laughs> How's it going, Carla? It's going. Oh, okay. It's going. It's going for a Wednesday. <laughs> is that, oh, is that good or bad? It's good. All right, cool. I think. <laughs> now, before we started recording, you were telling us how you were a little bit nervous and we were like, you know what? We remember our first, well, oh, that's not that weird. <laughs> um, the first time we started recording and yeah, it was really weird, but like, nah, it's just like just meeting someone, getting to know someone. It's just, uh, you kind of have to forget that all this is here, but I know you have some experience because I've seen some of your lives. Yeah. Talk a little bit about that. Like, how was it the first time you just got on live? Was it nerve wracking or you had an idea of what you were doing or was it like, I can't see you guys, so <laughs> I'm just yeah. talking to myself. I think it was mainly like that because, so I went live and then it was just like, well, nobody, know, not like the crowd, not that nobody knows me. Uh-huh. And it was mainly like, I still was not cake by Carla. I was just Carla. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? I'm going to go live doing makeup. And a lot of the times they were like, dude, you should do lives on makeup or you're cooking. And then I was like, no, I'm, I'm not good with like all the the amount of seasonings or it's like you let tanteo. <laughs> right. Because like, there's not an actual measure. Yeah, no. It's a little bit sprinkled, of this, a little bit sprinkled of Sprinkled with love. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, I started doing the live and it was just like. You know, it was like five, then nine, and then I had like 36. And I was like, dude, this is my first live ever. <laughs> and I was nice. like, everybody is tuned in. Like, what is she doing? <laughs> so like how you said earlier, was anyone ever like, do you make cakes? Or did they kind of yeah. like already know? Like, <laughs> Yeah. You know what? At the beginning, it was like because my business page wasn't like my work yet. Okay. And then it was like slow, like. I didn't have, like, my first year, I was asking people, like, hey, I do makeup. Yeah. Do you want to get your makeup done? Uh, now it's like I run from them. <laughs> yeah, because we were like, hey, you know what? She makes cakes, fool. Like, yeah, right. let, let's get her on. Like, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, we're going to yeah. do cake testing, too. Yeah. yeah, no, no, no. They were like, they were like, the first person's like, oh, do you do cakes? And I was like, no. She was like, oh, it's because your name is kind of throwing me off. Uh, That's why I kind of did it, like, with a K. Okay. So in yeah. my head, I'm like, okay, maybe... It'll throw people off, like the K thing. Gotcha. It really didn't work out. <laughs> it's makeup, though. It's makeup. So it's for makeup. those that don't know, I do makeup. makeup. So how long have you been doing makeup? This year would be three years and a half now. In okay. September. I remember my first day, actually. It was September 4th of 2021. Okay. So we're three years in now. But prior to that, I mean, I was doing it, like, on my friends, okay. my family. It wasn't, like... So hey, you got to pay me. So that's kind of what got you into it, motivated. Like, that's what like, kind of, hey. like, COVID hit. So I was uh, like, you know what? I have to do something. Yeah. Right. Prior to that, I was working at a liquor store, so nobody was like. I remember. I was like, nobody up? was hey. taking me serious. They're like, this is the girl that worked at the liquor store. Hey, you know what? You have to start somewhere. You know what? Yeah. It was very, like, I don't want to say hard, but it was very, like, when you're building something and in your head you're like, is it going to work? Is it going to hit? And it was something like I'm new to it. It's kind of like an industry, and you're you're like the new little kid in school, and they're looking at you like, "Who's this?" When it comes to being an entrepreneur, and you know, pretty much taking life into your own hands and saying, "I'm not going to work for anybody but myself," um, you have a lot of doubters. A there, lot. Is, there is a lot of doubters out there, and say, "Oh, why are you doing that?" Yeah, I don't know if you experienced that. Did you? Um, uh, it didn't come like for my family or my friends, but there was people that knew me like clients from the store and they would be like, like, what are you doing? Like, why'd you quit the store? And I worked at the store for nine years. So when I stopped, it was like, damn, she's really like not working at the store anymore. And it was just like from one day to another, like. I don't know. It was just like... You had an epiphany. I, yeah, like, I was like, you know what? I'm tired of working at the store. I love the store. I love my clients. I loved, mm-hmm. like, the vibes. But, you know, when you're, like, just stuck, and it's like, I want something new. And I don't know, like, this whole new thing was like, damn, this is what I needed. And it's been, like, adventurous. It's been, like, new. I mean, a lot of people. A lot of people. <laughs> From a lot, everywhere. <laughs> a lot of ups and downs on your own business, right? A lot. A lot of times where it was like, damn, I should just give up. 
I was tired. I was like not tired, but I was like upset that there was like weekends that I didn't have. I would have one client or like no clients. And it's like, dang, when you're used to like working from check to check to not having anything, it's like, well, what do I do? I need to find another hustle. Right. And it's like, no, I, I, I'm like, no, you have to stick to it, stick to it. And well, here I am. <laughs> Sticking to it. And I see now that um, you're putting out some shirts, right? I am for Catacall. So last year I did the parade. Okay. I was like, okay, guys, this is my bright idea. I'm going to go in the parade. So like I could be known more. Right. Like obviously in, in Brawley, I mean, a lot of people know me. Um, but it was like, there's going to be people from everywhere. Right. I was handing out lipsticks, lashes. I think I got one. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Business cards. Right. And I made shirts, like, with the whole makeup thing. And But this year, I'm not going to come out in the parade. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to do more like a Western kind of deal. But I'm going to put a girl on it. Okay. So far, they're, they're selling good. They're moving good. I was like, okay. I had guys wearing them last year with all the makeup. So I was like, maybe this year they won't because it's a girl. But it's like it's the minimum. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, talking on, you know, personal stuff, you know, transitioning from your business to, um, I know I gave you five, I told you to give us like five topics to talk about. Yeah. Right. And, um, growing up in a small town and how's that been for you and, you know, and try to. Try to take your, your business goals to another level. Yeah. Um, well, because we, it's like, how do you say it? Not like you're proving, but you're kind of proving for yourself, not for everybody else. Right. Um, but you grew up with majority of a lot of these people. Yeah. And it was something like, I was like, how am I going to do it? How am I going to? Because with a lot of love comes a lot of hate. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know? And, it, and you kind of have like to have a strong backbone for things like this because a lot of criticism comes with it a lot of doubters a lot of people that don't want you to succeed and it's like okay I have, I have to like keep my head in the game and like kind of quiet out the noise right. from everywhere and I think that was like my main thing when I started I was very like fearful of like what are people gonna say or now they have like the rants and raves <laughs> it's like, yeah. am I going to be getting bad reviews? I was, like, scared. And when I first started, I was just like, man, it's it's hard, like, to get a hold of people that it's like you're proving to them, I can do you, girl. Like, not like that, but. <laughs> <laughs> but I can, yeah. I can, like, you know, glam you up. I can have you feeling your best. And then there's going to be a lot of, like, non-believers and, they're going to be like, oh, I could have done this better or something, you know? But living in such a small town, it's, like, diff not, not too difficult, but it's kind of, like, got to run away from the, now, let me ask, the negative um, things. Uh, when you started, like, promoting the business, was did you see, like, other people already doing it? Did you feel like you were going to be looked at as copying, or were you, like, one of, like, to first be out there and kind of, like, oh, shit, I'm going to be judged because I'm the first one to do it. Because I don't really remember a whole lot of people before COVID or during COVID promoting it. Yeah, and I feel like when COVID hit, well, everybody was on the internet. Uh -huh. Everybody was doing, like... Tumblers was a big thing. Yeah, everybody like, was it was just, it. everybody was doing that. Yeah. Um, People were doing, like, strawberries, and yeah, then, yeah. you know, and, and so when I did the makeup thing, I mean, I've always liked it. So when I, I chose to, like, continue doing it, and it was, like, self-taught. I didn't go to school. Okay. It was all just self-taught, and I learned along the way, you know. Um, but I did see the, a, lot of, a lot of girls that even went to school with me, and they do it. So okay. it's like, so it's like, but I, it's not like a competition, I don't think, because there's space for everybody to right. grow and to succeed and but not everyone thinks that way, to be honest. Yeah, not like, everybody thinks. <laughs> no, yeah. I agree. Like, not everybody thinks like that. Not everybody's going to think I, like. But as long as you're, like, confident yeah, like, in what you're doing, you know you're not trying to take no one's business. Yeah, like no. You said, like, 
And it was it was crazy because this year I was actually nominated in the Reader's Choice. Oh, it's dope. For Best Makeup Artist in the Imperial Valley. Nice. Um, I didn't win, but I won in my heart. <laughs> yeah, no. Hey, you got nominated. Yeah, no. Yeah, I said it like, We still haven't gotten nominated for <laughs> shit. We're like <laughs> right. one of the first podcasts. We're DJs. We're... Yeah. Used to be on OnlyFans. <laughs> <The whole, laughs> I, mean, I, mean, I think we're the first ones out here doing that. So. Yeah. But you know what? It's a lot of like marketing, a lot of like promotion, put, yes. promoting your work, a lot of free, yeah. sh- a lot of yeah, yeah. like okay, yeah. you're gonna do this, and you you have to like put your foot on it, like and don't let up when yeah. it comes to things like that. Like it's like damn, I'm gonna I'm like otra vez, cómo chingaste con esto. <laughs> Right, you know, some some people do see it that way. It's just like, uh, you again. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And but it's like you need it. Yeah, you need to stay on that hustle, stay on that grind. Yeah, you know, for for example, like us, it's like, I think one of the hardest things is YouTube. You know, with us, it's um, it's getting that subscriber. Yeah, you can get get, get views, but it's getting that subscriber and having them come back and having them even turn on that notification bell. Let yeah. you let them know that you posted something else. That's uh, that's one thing that's super hard, and we did everything we could to like, you know, hey, we're giving away movie tickets, we're giving away this. Uh, it's a, like like you said, it comes back down to self promotion, and um, like they say, you gotta you gotta spend money to make money, right? And uh, and and it's very true, it's very true, but but. For you to get nominated for Reader's Choice, that's um, that's an accomplishment in itself. Yeah, and, and when I when I got the email, I was like, like shook, like that's crazy. I never like imagined because I, I don't just do work here in the Pro Valley. Okay, like I've right. gone to Oxnard, I've gone to San Diego, Yuma, like so. It's like it's, that's why I I feel like in me it's like you have to keep pushing like. It just takes one door so, to be open. So you mentioned going out of town or, or here, like you you don't work like for weddings, quinceañeras, but like is there like something maybe we haven't touched on or you haven't shared or that people might not know that you've done? Um, I was offered to do prison. Wow. On people in prison. Really? Yes. When they messaged me, I was like, uh, what do you mean? I was like, <laughs> what are you talking about? Like, I'm going to be with... And, and, wow. and it's like, not that I was scared, but it was like, I was kind of shook. Like, the girl was like, oh, yeah, I got your number from one of your clients. And she's telling me my client. And I was like, in the prison? Like, she was like, you just kind of kind of look like they're a little beat up. And I, I, well, on Halloween time, I haven't done any this year. Mm. But I do like the really, like, gruesome looks. Okay. And oh, she dope. was she was like, I, I kind of need you to make them look a little beat up. And I was like, dude, I'm sure you can find one around there. <laughs> They're doing a promotional video yeah. for prison or what? Like, <laughs> <laughs> they were just doing like, uh, I don't know. They were going to do, it was like, I don't know, not a play or like, I don't know what they were doing. But it was just like, and it was like 15 of them. And then oh. they're talking about they're on a budget. And I'm like, girl, I'm on a budget too. <laughs> And it was just like, yeah, it was wild. I was, now, was like, this was this one of our logo prisons or? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. I can say it. Oh. I mean, I, I can't say who I talked to, but right. it was uh, in Sentinela. Okay. State prison. So it was like, oh, that's crazy. All right. I had never been asked. I did also um, career day this year. Oh, you did? For Witter. Okay. How was that? Like trying to inspire the next generation? You know what? It was like, it was a really good feeling because I remember being young and I'm sure a lot of people can relate. We never had people that were just out of like, I'm not going to say a normal job, but like. Outside the box. Yeah. Like a nurse, a cop, a doctor, a firefighter. Like, so when you're going and you're approaching and you're like, it was just like a big crowd and they're like, oh my God, you do makeup. And they're little, like they're little and they're so they're talking about how much do you earn? <laughs> like they wanted to know yeah. a lot of stuff. And I think it's something that I, I don't have kids, but I say it like my nieces or my nephews, I always say like, do whatever your heart, like whatever you want, you can do it. Just don't go be doing some crazy shit. Yeah. <laughs> 
do something that you're you know that you're gonna impact others and you're they're gonna see it like a different view of things right because it's true you know with um with career day here in the valley especially you have your typical jobs correctional officer nurse uh border patrol that's what i remember seeing growing up nothing like you said out of the box yeah Yeah. and it was it was nothing never like that so like me growing up is just i'm gonna do i'm gonna do music my whole life right and it's just like you got the teachers looking at me like you're crazy right right it's just like but now look at us you know we're we're here we got a podcast we got we got so many things going on and it's just um it's just a constant hustle and i think i'll say it is that we get put into a system of going to school from this hour to this hour because it trains us it wants to train our mental as we know that we need to go to work and you need to clock in and clock out it's basically and how to be a worker Yes. Yeah, like it's like you get taught that, but you don't get taught how to be like a leader. Yeah, yeah. a lot of the times they're like, and you're gonna have a boss, mm-hmm. and you're gonna have to like. It's like when you come to school, we're like, you're gonna do the same thing on your dog, but it's like they didn't really teach us like you could be your own boss, you can do whatever you want. Like you're not allowed to think outside the box. Yeah, so yeah. a lot of that was like. Like, the little kids looking at them, and a lot of them were really, like, paying attention. And, like, they asked, like, oh, and did you go to school and things like that. Like, I didn't say I didn't go to school because I did. I, I I went and I got my medical assisting, my CNA. I did things like that. But it was just, like, not – it's not, like, fulfilling how this is. Right. Like, it's something that I enjoy. Like, I like to get up and go to work. <laughs> that sounds crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and at the end of the day, that's what it should be. Yeah, like, and it's something, like, and you're very, like, praised for what you're doing. And you're, like, they appreciate you. and You're valued, like, and I feel like a lot of people that have normal jobs, they're very undervalued yeah. for what they do. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. So, um, life traumatic events. Um, I know you wanted to touch on that. What, um, what are your experiences that you've, that made you maybe hit rock bottom, come back up, and, you know, be strong? I feel like, so, a lot of people follow me on my personal page, and they know, like, what's happened to me, and in the aspect of the, I want to say, like, the most traumatic thing, and it was losing my spouse. I was very young. I was, like, 24, 23, Mm -hmm. around there, 23 years old. And it was, like, scary. It was, like, I was young. And I still think then it wasn't even, like, you know, like, my, not my lowest peak. Because I I didn't want to say it was my lowest peak. Because I went through, like, the changes of what grief does to you. And it was, like, you're just trying to, like, pull yourself up. And it was, like. Well, for me, being obviously in a relationship, we were together for four and a half years, and we lived together. You know, we obviously shared life together. Um, And he was my first boyfriend. (laughs) So it was very, like, I was, like, a little in a bubble, and then the bubble pops, and it's like, dude, what do I do? And I didn't know how to go from there. So I was, like, living crazy, like, partying. You know, I I didn't, not I want to say I didn't care, because I did. But it was the only way that I, I knew how to cope with it because I was never taught that, like, young. Right. It was kind of like, and I was raised by my grandparents. um. So the, I don't think they never, like, talked about, like, somebody passing. And I think, like, the only person that I remember passing was my great-grandma. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was young, so I didn't really experience, like, death, you right. know, until, like, an older age, and then... So they never talked about it? So they never talked about it. You know it. what? That's something I it's can relate so to. It's so crazy. And I still remember to the day when my... my I would say my dude died. Um, when I... It took me three... Because this happened in Mexicali. So mm-hmm. it happened... Like, I, it took me 
almost four days to come back to Brawley because I was handling things over there. And my dad was like, no llores. <laughs> I was like, what? He was very, well, my grandpa, I called him dad. Mm. And he was like, no llores. Like, vas a estar bien. And I was like, what? Dad, do you realize what's going on right now? <laughs> I was <laughs> like, you don't understand. Like, and it was something like, and I think it was like, because they're like very old school. Right. They're very old school my grandparents. You can cry behind closed you doors. You can cry but, yeah. on your own time, girl. Don't be crying right here in front of everybody. And everybody was there. Like, they were like, Carla's going to come here. So everybody was there, right. you know? And um, I remember my grandma was crying, but she like was like a one minute cry and then just get it together. So I, I didn't really like get any type of like, I'm not going to say consuelo because I did. You know, my parents showed it in their own way. And I think I appreciate it now more than ever because um, after him, I experienced, like, friends passing and things like that. And I'm just like, I'm not going to say I know how to deal with it, but I kind of, like, know how to control my emotions a little bit, I want to say. Right. And the, in the moment, I didn't. I didn't know. I was crying all the time. I felt like the freaking corona. <laughs> <laughs> crazy i was like <laughs> drinking all the time i was like dude get it together right. get it together and i think like it still was like i was at the store working so it was not like i would go to work party work party like and my parents were fine with it like they didn't care like they were like Tabienia. like she's living her life right. but i was dealing with a lot of it mentally and emotionally and when I talk about it now, like, people are like, dude, you're so admirable. Like, I would have never known this happened to you. And I was like, yeah, sometimes, I don't want to say I forget, but, like, I block it out. Like, because a lot of people even knew him. Like, there's girls that are like, oh, I went to school with him, and they'll talk about him. And you got to kind of, like, work through your day and, like, okay. Because it kind of takes you back. It kind of, like, throw, mm -hmm. not throws me off, but it's, like, a good feeling in a way. Because it's like, it's been already this year, eight years. Mm -hmm. So it's like, damn, it's crazy. People still remember him and well, when he was in high school. Right. Like, and how he was, and how he carried himself. I was like, yeah, it sounds like him. <laughs> right. um, but I, it helps me a lot now. And it helps me understand a lot of people that are in my chair. A lot of uh, women, obviously, because they're in my chair, you know, um, and you hear their stories and when they're talking, because you're kind of like a counselor in the moment. You're over there getting them ready and you're like trying to go about your day. And they start telling their stories and they get emotional sometimes. And it's like, damn. And I say sometimes you don't realize how relatable stories can be yeah. to one another. Yeah, no. I, 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 I had came across one maybe like two years ago and she was telling me and i was like that's so crazy and she was like yeah una señora mayor eh? like and she was just like i just lost my husband not too long ago she was like we were married for 43 years and i was like oh my god i'm like girl you're doing great and she's looking at me and then i'm telling her like how when she's explaining and i'm like telling her i can't relate on the years because that's a long time to spend with somebody and that happens but I'm like, I relate to you and what you're feeling and, you know? Yeah. And, and I think it keeps us kind of grounded and it kind of makes you, like, value and appreciate anybody in general. Like, whoever you meet across while well, you're going, you know, and you're appreciative. Yeah. It's something that kind of was like, man, I wish, I wish in me that I didn't have to have that humbling moment to, like, see life differently. It was like... Like, why did that have to happen for me to see life in a different lens instead of naturally being like that? Right. So it's something that now it's like, damn, it helps me now. I feel motivated all the time. It's like, dude, if you can get through this, you can get through anything. Yeah. You know, I think, yeah, death takes a, takes a big toll. And um, like I said, many people grieve many different ways. And you know, to see you come out on top. It's um it's a good thing. Yeah. Like, um, it's just like 
Because a lot of times I feel like they feel like you're going through that and they just get in the tiras a la milonga. I mean, I was for a while. I'm not going to say no because I was hard timing it for a couple of years. But there was like a come to Jesus moment that I was like, Carla, you got to just snap out of it, girl. Because this can't be forever. Like, I had a lot of, I had a lot of little wrong loves along the way to kind of be like, girl, you need to come back to first base. <laughs> you just need to sit down. Right. And I feel like that's where I'm at now. Like just observing everything and everyone. So that's like the one thing I always say, like when I come across people, that's like my advice is like, no matter what like try on tribulation you face, mm-hmm. as long as you put God first, right. it'll get better from there. Definitely. So yeah. yeah so um with your business how how far would you want to take it like what let's say next five years how where do you see yourself i honestly like i think of it (laughs) i was literally thinking of that the other day because it gets to where it's like i need extra hands already like it can't just be me anymore Mm -hmm. and it's like i need help with hair or and it's like, if I can get a group of girls, we can open a business. It'd be great. I think that's like my next, like in me, that I want. Mm-hmm. Kind of like to build like a team rather than just myself. And not take that from them because they're this, they're like the artists of their own brush. You know, but, but it happens like where I'm like, they want to hire me. And then I'll be like, okay, but you have like nine girls and you need to be ready by 4 p.m. Like, girl, we're going to start at 2 in the morning. And then they'll be like, <laughs> yeah, no, it gets crazy. And they'll be like, I'll be like, well, I have extra hands. And they'll be like, why? Well, I want you to do my makeup. And I'm like, yeah. But the person that, that's going to come work with me, she's also great. Like, she's also amazing at what she does. So I give that that credit because it's like sometimes they don't, women don't do that in the mm. industry. They don't. Mm. Like, no se apoyan. Not, not just women, but guys, too. Like, yeah? I think, I'm like... I think it's harder for us to give another guy a compliment. <laughs> I, right? It is. But, but like, like how you said, I, I can see it. Like, they want you. Not that they don't trust the other person, yeah. but your, your name's already established. Yeah. So. And it's like, we all have to start from somewhere. And I remember being how everybody else was like, no, don't. Or, like, I know somebody better or... And it's not even about, like, me being better. It's just, like, I feel like when you're doing something in general and anything, you have to love what you do, mm-hmm. no matter what. Because mm-hmm. if you don't love what you do, then people are not going to be, like, they're not passionate or, I don't know. It's, it's not just, like, about the money. It's also maybe with your strengths. Like, maybe you do something better. Or not better, but different than another. Than it's another kinda like, artist. like a tattoo artist. Kind of like one's better at portraits or, or just is, you know. Likes doing portraits Yeah, and me all tattooed, than, yeah. You know, <laughs> stuff like that. Like My artist? I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. My artist, artist is great. Artist, <laughs> no, no, like my artist, my tattoo oh, artist. Oh, okay. He's great. Give him a shout out. Hey, yeah. thank you. El Sir, you guys, yeah. I'm sure everybody has tattooed by him, but he's he's great at what he does. I mean, not that I, I because I, I haven't been tattooed by other people, so. Mm-hmm. But I mean, how you say? There's one artist that's like. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I get what you mean. Mm-hmm. So it's like. But I don't downplay a lot of... There's times where they'll be like, I don't know, just the other day, they're like, hey, do you have any bookings for this day? And I'm like, dude, I don't have till December. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. And they're like, what, well, do you know anybody? I sure do, girl. Let me give you the list. And I'll shoot them like four or three different girls. But why? Because they're just as good as me. Mm-hmm. Or I feel it like I'm not like a hater. <laughs> no, or, or it's kind of like this is the people that you trust and like you, you wouldn't want to put someone's name out there that you don't know. And you know what? I follow like a lot of girls on my makeup page. I follow a lot of girls from the valley. OK, like and the, and I'll be like, well, you know what? I follow her and I see her work. And I mean, I like it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure you'll like it. Have you ever collabed with anyone? Like- you know what? No, but I did a live with some girl from Nashville. <laughs> Oh wow. oh wow! See, she was That's like, cool. "Hey, I saw your page," and I was like, "Girl, where are you from? Why don't you see my page?" She was like, "Would you like to do a live?" And I was like, "Sure." She was like, "I think your time is like six, mine's like eight. 
Or like, we have like a little time difference. And I was like, well, if you want to do it earlier, we can. And she was like, yeah, I'm up for it. And it was cool. Like, it was something different. You had like a, I even have other followers like from other places. And it's like, damn. That's dope. I need to do this. I need to be doing all this all the time. <laughs> it comes down to networking. Yeah, networking. you know what? And that's what it really is. Like, I feel like, especially here in the Valley, you got to like know somebody to know somebody to kind of like be like, connect yeah. the dots everywhere. <laughs> yeah, it took us a long time to see that. But like, Try try not to make like your hometown the like the center of what yeah. you're trying to do because it unfortunately where we live everyone knows each other so it's like you'll you'll find more hate than love but but like as long as you're focused on what you're doing it, it doesn't matter where it goes it, it, it you'll 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 start seeing love like you said right now from different places different yeah and honestly, even different countries honestly I've done every little city in the Imperial Valley. Uh-huh. So it's like I've done Calipat, I've done Nyland. Shit, you did the prison. Like. <laughs> <laughs> I've done Heber. Like the little, like the random is like, dang, how do I end up here? Yeah. Um, but and it's cool. It's cool, like because you know so many people from out of where you're from, like Brawley. Yeah. We're gonna say. Yeah. I mean, everybody knows me here, but when you start to get known, like in other little towns, that's a good feeling. Oh yeah. Like, cause it's scary. <laughs> They're like, who's this girl? <laughs> yeah. Um, examples, like, it's hard. Like, for us, it's, it's it's been hard for us to get, you know, people to follow us from here, right? But for, for a while, we were doing a segment called Bump It or Dump It. So people, artists would send us their music, and we'd, we'd rate it. Oh, right? okay. And... We started getting submissions from Puerto Rico, New York, Texas, Atlanta, and Florida. It was just like, and we were tripping out. Like, I don't know how we reached those places either. Yeah. It was random as heck. Yeah. And, <laughs> like, sir. <laughs> and it, it was like, and sometimes it's hard to get a simple like from a follower that follows you. That the family way, <laughs> like family. Yeah. Hey, all you have to do is share it, like yeah. it, or comment. That's it. That's it. We're not asking for money yet. Yeah, yeah. Like, just share it, please. Yeah. So yeah, you know, and that's that's one way that people could support a small business. Yeah, is not even purchasing anything. It's just you guys are gonna be all up on my makeup page, right? <laughs> You're gonna have a lot of artists. Yeah, and and just um, sharing. You know, sharing, you know, liking a post, reposting it, what, what, whatever it is to help somebody, somebody grow. Yeah. You know, and like I said, a lot of times it's not, it's not, it's not with money. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, it's like everybody has, everybody that networks has a following. Some, it could be small, it could be a big following. It doesn't matter, but you have a following, right? And that following when you share something, it's they're seeing it, right? And who knows? Maybe somebody that follows us is be like, "Hey, I need my makeup done. Let me check her out." Right? Yeah. It's just because because you're we're we're in the same industry because I'm sure you've been asked like, "Hey, I'm getting my makeup done for a wedding. This and that. Do you, Do you know, know any DJs? DJs? Do you yeah. know a photographer? Right. Do you know someone that does you know whatever?" And and we've been asked several like our, our I think my most common one is like do you know a choreographer, do you know someone that takes pictures or has a photo booth, and like you know what maybe because we're guys I haven't really been asked like makeup, and but, I think but but we we can do that now. Low yeah. key, I think you're gonna I they've never asked me that, like how you say, mm-hmm. because you guys are guys, right. but it's like I know a lot of people. Yeah, I right. know like, <laughs> dude. I'm like, catch me at 805. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Listening to these DJs. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> and I'm like, um, no, but they'll ask me, like, do you know any nail techs? And then, like, things like that. But it's like, maybe because I'm a girl. We got to break the stereotype, guys, because, yeah. look, the one that's broken through and the only one that like, I've seen broken through is, do you know a tattoo artist? Because yeah. that's male and female. Yes. That's it. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Like, so I, we got to break this other one. Yeah. We're going to have yeah. to do like a list of 
These are my party people. Yeah. This there is we go. Done from the DJ down to the nails down to the girl that does makeup. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to an yeah. Uh, what is it? Official? How do you say official? Officiant. That one, I can't say that fucking word to save my life. <laughs> but do you know someone that marries I was people? Like, officiant. <laughs> officially, that, no, that that's during a Lent at McDonald's. The fish fillet. That's, that's and that's actually a, that's actually my cousin. He can marry somebody. Oh, they say he's a fish fillet. I was like, oh shit, damn. Nah, but we all know somebody that knows somebody. So it's just think outside the box. Yeah, yeah. and it was funny when when I was saying like, hey guys, we were actually. What were we doing? Like, we're at my house and we're cooking out. And well, my homegirl, she's your cousin. Mm-hmm, Gabby. Right? Yeah. And I was like, dude. Hey. Yeah. I was like, I'm going to be on a podcast, guys. They're like, what the fuck? Oh, <laughs> I know, man. Yeah. Uh, I was like, they do not want me on there. I could already see my cousin. She's like, and talk about what, Carla? <laughs> I'm sorry. When, when I think about her, I remember the recording at Carl's Jr., uh, like that, I'm like, damn, they're still using her. She don't even work here no more. Like, oh, with her voice? voice? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I don't think she works here. But like, recently, they, they have the AI, right? Yeah, everybody's You know what? AI. Like, AI is crazy. That is, I went the other day and I was like, hello? Like, <laughs> Can I speak to a person? <laughs> right? I was like, dude, I am not for this. Can I get the person on here? My yeah. Like, I literally drove up. Because she was like, yeah, we got the order. And I was like. I was so confused. Mm-hmm. I was like, when did you guys start doing this? I was like, dude, I really don't go up to eat. I, I, want, I want to talk to Gabby. Can you I put Gabby, like, back Gabby? Gabby back on? Where is Gabby? I was like, Gabby hasn't worked there, so I don't go there anymore. <laughs> um, definitely, yeah. AI, AI is taking over. Um, speaking of Carl's Jr., I went to it. I was, I was like, can I get a double Western? And they're like, with a guacamole? And I was like, <laughs> what are you talking about? I was like, I got so pissed. I was just like, you know what? I'm leaving. I'm leaving. And yeah, because I don't know. Just talking to AI is just. Um, like I, weird. Yeah, it, it weird. definitely is. And I know um, Taco Bell Incorporated also. People are going right? to start losing their jobs on here. So, <laughs> so I, I tricked it. And it was actually doing good. But I was like, you know what? I go. También me puedes dar, oh, and it just shit. said it just said quiet, and it was just like wait, Taco Bell don't so speak Spanish, right? What the fuck? So I was like, tacos. Those racist tacos. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> but uh, but anyways, yeah, AI is just um just on a whole another level now. Did you see um Elon Musk finally come out with um AI robots? Yeah. Yeah. Oh damn. And literally like serving food and yeah, I seen. <laughs> Where was it? On I was on a on TikTok scrolling and it was showing at a Denny's, and they put Crazy. their plates and they're just serving <laughs> and I'm like, what? The fuck? <laughs> so where's the server? I need a napkin. <laughs> like, what? How does that work? Right, no napkin. <laughs> <laughs> I even feel like when I do the Walmart self checkout, it's like that too. They'll be watching me like, like, girl, are you silly? <laughs> like, no. <laughs> Self checkout. I'm doing the, your job, girl. I just got the 75 inch TV for a dollar ninety nine. There you go. <laughs> no, it's like, and it's funny because it's like they stereotype you like me vento tatuada, <laughs> and you know what? And it's something even I tell my mom oh, like when man. I go and I work because I do house calls right when I'm doing like big events, mm-hmm. and I'm like, man, what are they gonna say when I knock on their door in this nice ass community? I'm all tatted up. Like, who in the hell is this girl? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, like... <laughs> we don't want no tortillas. Yeah, like, my mom's all like... <laughs> my mom's always, like, the first one, like, you see why you should have never tattooed yourself? Like, girl, it's fine. <laughs> Some people hiding their art. I wear mine. <laughs> yeah. I even have a makeup brush. You'd be amazed when I'm doing, like, um, obviously working, and the photographer is getting, like, the bride or the quinceanera, because it's mostly them. Um, the My... My brush always comes out and it has my name on it. That's dope. That's cool. So it's like, en tu foto sali mi mano. I know. You know, on our <clears throat> podcast recently, one thing that has been really, really taking off, um, especially on TikTok, uh, scary stories. I know. Do you have any? I'm scared of the dark, guys. I do not have no scary stories. I'm really? scared of the dark. I uh, sleep with the whole nightlight. 
to the I swear like I don't know what I was at Walmart and you know they have like those little it kind of looks like the DJ like bulbs he gave me in like either a butterfly or a star I had a butterfly one and it broke and I was like man I need to go to Walmart again my little nightlight broke <laughs> I'll be scared of the dark they used to tell us you know what what um I when I was my whole childhood I lived across the street from the world field the Warren field mm-hmm. and my brother one well, my older brother and I, we would have to go through the trash in the night. Okay. And back then, it was like a little, like, well, now it's completely open. They built, like, a whole garage. But it was, like, super tiny, like a little, como, a fence. And you had to walk through to get through the alley to throw the trash. This was before it invented, like, the little trash is at your house. Dude, I would run. Like, my brother goes, I still señor loco. Oh, shit. <laughs> and there was a señor, like, that would just sit in the alley. Like, obviously, I'm assuming, you know, he was homeless, but I was scared. And I was like, no, there's no way that you guys are making me throw the trash in the night. <laughs> and then the, my, my nana goes, no te va a hacer nada, no más estás sentado. I would run for my life on the way back. I was like, this little narrow thing, there goes my little chubby ass running. Like, dude, no voy a salir de esta. She said, this is the scariest story you're going to get this out of me. This is the scariest shit you're going to get out of me. I was always scared. My friends know that I'm all scared of the dark. You know what? I seen you guys had done one of Dogwood. Right. Right? Mm-hmm. One of my uncles, that lady, se la apareció. So I was like, dude, this is, I was listening to the thing, like the little, the where, oh, and do you guys ever hear? I was like, oh, hell no, I'm not going to listen to this. I was like, they told me this, this story. I was like, so this shit is real. So I'll be like, you know what? When I would go out in the night, I would avoid that street because I was like, mm, like no te vas a subir en mi carro. Vete. Right. <laughs> yeah. so but it's, apparently it, she, it's just to guys, though. She she hitchhikes. When she's hitchhiking, she's, um, she jumps in. Yeah, uh, like if you don't pick her up, yeah. she goes in your car. Yeah. That's scary. I'm like, dude. Well, maybe she's progressive now and she'll get in <laughs> girls' cars. So don't even risk it, eh? Like, <laughs> don't risk going on the fucking don't street. Don't do it. Don't do it. And then, the, like, when my uncle would say it, he was like, and it was right here, look. And I would be scared for my life. Like, God, please, don't let this lady ever appear on us. <laughs> even going home in the night when I was younger with my parents, I'd be like, God, please, let the lady not come in. <laughs> Dang. My dad's yeah. in the car. But you have she heard, wants to get him. But do you did you did hear stories like that growing yeah, up? Yeah, that that dogwood story. I've heard mm-hmm. it like, and it wasn't just like I've heard it like numerous times. I think there's like an article in the newspaper, mm-hmm. and I'm like, dude, that that is really a thing. That's scary. I think there's a website. It's called Scariest Roads of California, and I, ten scariest roads of California, and I think dogwood's like number six. Wow, it looks scary as fuck in the night, let me tell you. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be with my high beams on. <laughs> no surprises. Cause yeah. Another no. one that, that you guys reminded me of where I used to work on River Drive. Um, one time they had me go in and work at 2 or 3 in the morning to unload a truck. And I was using the forklift. I was using, making all kinds of noise, right? I had no business making that much noise, but they're like, you know what? We need this truck unloaded now. Okay. <laughs> And then just random as hell, I hear kids playing. Like like if it's daytime, it's three in the morning. I'm yeah. like, all right, fucking parents don't give a shit. They probably gave them candy, soda, and all this other stuff. And then they started getting like louder or closer. And I'm like, all right, I'm tripping. But maybe I'm tired, whatever. So I go to work the next day, and I tell my coworkers, I was like, hey, bro, um, yeah, everything came in right, but... Uh, do you ever hear kids playing? And he froze. I'm like, <laughs> dude, he's like, yes. And I thought I was tripping too. You know what? Right now that you're saying that, my best friend, Vivian, if you're watching this, I'm going to tell your story. Hey. I think his name is Billy. That's what they named him, right? The little. They used to live in a house on, is it G? It's like by, I was going to say Robo Bank. It's not my Robo Bank no more. It's mechanics. Right. Mm-hmm. And and uh, she would say that there was like they would mess with her knob, <laughs> the knob of the fucking house. And she would. I mean, we were young when I went like that. I would start going over to her house. I was like 14, 15 years old. Mm-hmm. And 
she would she would tell me this story. And so when I would spend the night, I was scared as fuck. I was like, girl, if I start hearing some shit, I'm out. I'm going home. Cause they would she would like saying like they would shake the door or close the door or hear spoons or forks. Like, dude, what the fuck? You live in a haunted house and you're telling the story like nothing. It was a hungry ghost. <laughs> like, damn. <laughs> some, but you know what? It, it's not like I have when I when I used to live with my dude, the one that passed. We used to hear the spoons in our house, oh, but I thought it was like, I was like, dude, maybe, well, we lived in apartments, so I was like, maybe they closed the door hard, I don't know. I didn't want to believe it was a fucking fork or a spoon, <laughs> but I'm like, why did they mess with forks? Why did they mess with spoons? I'm going to Google this now because <laughs> I I think of it and it's like, maybe that's like the scariest thing that's happened to me was the little, and the light flickering in my restroom there. That was it. And I was, like, scared, paranoid for my life. And he would leave to work in the madrugada, so I would sleep with the damn light on and all week. Like, we're not going to get scared. <laughs> this one hour from the sun to rise. <laughs> no, no. Right. Wow. Um, going back to River Drive, I've actually seen, if you look it up, I think there's actually articles on alien activity. Oh, shit, really? River Drive. Yeah. Our river drive? Nah. Yeah. <laughs> or there's another, like, one, huh? that's another one. That's another one. On uh, mine? Uh, the story, I know one of the stories has it is that there was a ball of light coming towards this person and his car, the story was somehow his car shut off. Being she tweaked her fool. Was this person sober oh, or was he on drugs? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Go and ahead, go it, ahead. it happened around that time in the morning, two, three o'clock in the morning. And this ball of light came towards him, and his car stopped working. He pulled off to the side, and by the time you know, he looked, the time had already gone by like two hours. Like, just from that time that he saw that to looking at the clock, two hours have gone by. So... What kind of car was it, fool? No, I'm sorry. I'm just kidding. This is the like, DeLorean from Back to the Future. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, there was a Ford. It stopped working. Eh? No. Found off road dead. Because it has to be the car. It has right. to be the car. But, uh, but yeah, it's just, um, it's, yeah, there, there's articles out there on, on the Valley with with um, Supernatural and um, UFOs. Yeah. Pretty crazy. I'm going to have to Google all this. Now I'm like traumatized. You end up going down the rabbit hole sometimes. You know what? Would it you, happens. Would you make up an alien? No. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. What if they're trying to like? They're gonna look like what, what is shit? that <laughs> on the Family Guy show? Uh -huh. You know that he, they had dressed him up as once as a girl, or even on Lilo and Stitch when he's dressed as the girl, the guy uh -huh. with one eye. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh no. Oh no. Yeah. Um, speaking of. Stuff like that. Would you would you like to do movies? You know what? Um, it's crossed my mind, like kind of getting into that type of industry. Like, it's like another door to be open. Honestly, kind of unlocking like another talent. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about acting. I'll probably be crazy. Like, if they get a crazy actor, yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> uh, um, you know. Especially like maybe with the film commission here in the valley, you know, reaching out to them and saying you do, you do makeup and you know, there's a lot of stuff that gets filmed out here down to commercials that a lot of people don't even realize. And and with your they were just doing a movie, no, like yeah. in what is it? Um, that mountain. What is it called? I'm like, what is the mountain called? Uh, superstition. Where they do all the paintings on there. Oh, um, salvation, 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 salvation yeah. mountain. Yeah. They were just doing, who was filming? And they took a picture with this person, and I'm trying to think right now. But it was like two weeks ago. And I was like, dude, how crazy. So people just be coming out here, and mm -hmm. we don't even know. Yeah, They're filming a whole ass movie, and we're just here. La, 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 la. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. So would you, would you, are you interested in taking that avenue? That would be something fun. And I think it'd be like different. It's always needed, though. Yeah. Like, it's always, like, it's something that's always happening. Like, movies are always happening. Or shows. Yeah. 
So it's like, man, doing a makeup artist. I always, uh, uh, a famous person, I was like, dude, one day, I'm going to do Cardi B's makeup. <laughs> dope. Yeah, Put it out into the universe. You yeah. know what's so funny? They had, uh, you know, Shotty Bay out here. Yeah. <laughs> right? And everybody was setting her, like, because she was looking for a makeup artist. And I was like, girl, I don't know how I feel about doing her makeup. Wow. <laughs> it was too much. I was I mean, like. It's publicity. It's publicity. And then she likes to do the life thing, you know? Mm -hmm. So I was like, dang, that means I have to get ready. And normally when I go to work, you'll never catch me. She's a pantufas. I'm going to make this clear. <laughs> you'll never catch me, like, with my hair or makeup done. I'll literally have it in, like, a slick bun and call it a day because it's hot. Like, I feel, obviously, they'll be like, do you feel like it's hot in here? And I'll be like, no, girl, this is natural. <laughs> Tengo calor trabajando. <laughs> I don't know. I think maybe it's because, like, I'm so close to them, the body heat. Mm -hmm. And I and I was like, so so when they said about shot, everybody was forwarding it to me on Snap. And I was like, dude, there's no way I'm going to be able to get to this girl. Like, she's looking probably, like, for a salon or, I don't know. I'm like, and they've asked, they've offered me, a chair like two years ago at a barbershop but it was like how am i gonna have the more i thought of it it was a great idea like because you they had like a girl that does nails and hair and like but in their own little rooms you know right and i was gonna be on a barbershop chair and i was like dude how am i gonna sit a girl there with all these dudes getting there good yeah <laughs> no that's very true yeah. yeah like you can't be doing all that yeah it was great, though. And they were like, well, maybe the husband's going to get the haircut and the wife's going to do the makeup. No, I go, dude, it's a lot. Son muchas. They get to say, aquí. But it is, it is something that I do want to look into, though, because I know that it's needed. It's not always, like, house calls. House calls. I mean, it's very, like, common now because they're like, I don't have to go nowhere. I'm just here in my house. You're going to get me ready. Hair, makeup, and just get dressy. I'm away. Has anyone ever been late to their own house call? You know what? <laughs> right? Okay. Sorry, ladies. I'm going to put your business out. You don't have to say their name. No, no. I'm not going to say their name. Say their name. Uh, say the client. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. We're kidding. No, no. Um, it'll always be the mother of the bride. Always. Always. Like, I'll be doing the bride, the bridesmaid, the, the daughter, their hair, whatever. And the mom is still out there doing, I don't know what, like getting her last little final touches, making sure everything's right. And it's like, y llegan? and they're like, I, I need to take a shower. <laughs> like, girl, you're going to be late to the wedding. Wow. So it's like, that's the only ones I want to say that are always like, damn. I mean, I'm late sometimes, but they understand. <laughs> and it's not like a late, like a, oh, you're going to miss your appointment now. You're ready. So I, I kind of like, have them ready sometimes like i'll up they're gonna know my secret <laughs> i'll do their like appointment earlier that way they're ready like with time they can take their selfies mexican time because you know what <laughs> no i'm like that like it's always like saturdays that i have events obviously and i have a sister <laughs> <laughs> we always tell her three hours in advance sometimes you one know. day <laughs> and they'll be like Carla, you're always late. And I was like, well, yeah, I have to get the whole valley ready before I come to this event. Yeah. And by the time I come, I don't even want to do my makeup anymore. I wish I could just come in my chongo. <laughs> like, girl, no. Can't be doing all that. Coming to the family function with my chongo and my Crocs. <laughs> Your Crocs, there you go. I don't actually own Crocs, guys. I'll are, do slides. Are you for it or against it? Crocs, I don't know. You know what? Oh, there's a whole community. You got to. I know. Careful. They're going to come careful. for me if I say something wrong. Like, personally, I don't like Crocs. Me neither. I'm sorry. We'll get canceled together. Don't worry about it. <laughs> it's a crock they're shit. like, you know what? <laughs> oh, this fool. Uh, He's the, what they the like, crock you know fool? what? Don't fucking get her. She doesn't no, like Crocs. She's not a crock person. They're going you know, to make sure they don't wear Crocs <laughs> to their appointment. <laughs> Oh, we, no. lost, we lost that sponsorship. <laughs> oh, don't, don't trip. I'll, I'll save you on this one. I'm not a, I'm not a Starbucks fan. Oh! My smile. You know what? I had a Starbucks this morning. But but I'm going to tell you that um, when I started, obviously, working in, like, my business is small, I, 
I support so many small little business. Like I've tried Dreamers and Brawling. There's a lot of little coffee shops yeah. that I never knew about. You know, right now I'm hooked on the Cafecito Bar. Oh, okay, <laughs> I'm like that? stuck there. Say. Like it's good. I don't know. Maybe because I like a, like a sweeter. What do you, what do you like? From yeah, that? what's your go-to drink? I've been trying a lot of the caramel latte. Okay. Or there was another one. They have like different names. Like it's like a Teddy something. I don't even know that there's times that it's like, oh, can you give me the one with the pink on it? So I don't know their names. That's good that they're cute because we have stupid names like, you want La Sucia? Do you want La Toxica? <laughs> what's what's on your mind right now? You, Who la is X, it right la now? Like, like, here, take Yeah, this. no, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you know be what? Bad. You know what? <laughs> I, I did a lash collection, and that is the hardest thing to come up with names. Names? I'm oh, like, we, we've got stupid names. So if you need stupid names... <laughs> I'm like, damn, what can be the names that I'm doing? El Sancho, <laughs> Sancho's favorite. You know what? I I see other people's names and I'm like, dude, I wonder if they like double think the name. No. They some I I know for <laughs> no. sure some they don't. <laughs> no. Yeah. They're just like, this is gonna reach somebody. La Somebody's Sh gonna like this. La Sharpie, la, <laughs> la, I mean, there's um, there's a million of them. Yeah. yeah. It's like, damn. Then you end up on Fool's Gone Wild. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm still, you know what? It was funny because um, they always push me to do like a payasa look. And I was like, you guys, I'm not doing that this year. Like, mm -hmm. it's like, I'm trying to leave that life. <laughs> trying to leave that life. I'm oh. trying my best. Right. Uh, you know what? I, I feel like I came from like such a background like that. That is like, I don't want to be like that no more. Okay. I'm trying to, but obviously, all this kind of throws everything off, you know. Like I think it's just growth, right? Like, like you've uh, gone through so many things yeah. that you're like, you know what? I know what I want. That's not what I want. Yeah, you know what? I even chopped off my hair. Like right now, it's obviously gotten long, but two years ago, I cut 17 inches off my hair. I was like, you know what? With this comes a lot of change, and yeah. I was just like, let's chop it off. And the girl was like, are you sure? I was like, girl, do it. I've been asking you. But it's like a sense of relief. Sometimes it's... Um, mm -hmm. It holds it's, a lot. It's like a rebirth. Yeah, like, yeah. the girl was like, are you sure? And I, mind you, I hadn't cut my hair since my dude passed. So yeah. I was holding on to, like, right. yeah, hella trauma in my hair. I was like, girl, I get home, I look like Dora. My mom was oh, like, fuck. dude, what the <laughs> fuck did you do? <laughs> Yes, back, swiper, back, back, back. no swiping here. <laughs> no swiping. <laughs> then I started, my hair was like a pitch black blue, and then I started going blonde, and everybody's like, dude, what is wrong with this girl? And I was like, yeah, I'm not the same. I, I feel like that they try to bring that side, and it's kind of like, so when you she's show, hidden. <laughs> when you show up to you know, events and stuff to do, <clears throat> to do makeup, do you feel like you get profiled sometimes? Um... I feel like sometimes, um, good question. It's happened. I'm not gonna say it hasn't because it has. Um, but they obviously they get to know me, right? And they'll like they talk to me and they like have conversation and they're watching how I'm talking, obviously. And then you'll know who you can like. You know, you know when you can be like yeah. your your normal self. Not that I'm not my normal self. But there's like to a certain extent where it's like, you know what? They are very like. There's a sense of professionalism yeah. to like the way even down to speaking. Yes. And, and that then, matters yeah. a lot. A and, lot. And then, you know, once you break that barrier. Exactly. And, and you break that wall down. It's like, okay. All right. Now. I okay, know. girl. Yeah. Now we can turn up. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, but you know what? There's clients that are. It'll be like 10 in the morning. Hey, you want a beer? Oh, uh, no. Like, girl, I got where are like, those clients that send them to <laughs> us? You need a DJ? You want to be? You here? know what? I've had amazing clients, and I'm not gonna say they've they've always like when they me toca todo el día, they'll be like, "Girl, we're having mimosas, we're oh, having shit. bagels, we're having all kinds of stuff," and I'm like, "Girl, I'm just trying to get you done up. You don't want your eyebrow to look crooked, so <laughs> we'll hold this for later." But no, there's and you know what? I've built a lot of like. Well, obviously, clients over the years, and it's the same. Majority when, of them is a lot of the same clients. That, that's good that you brought that up. Now, let me ask an uncomfortable question. When you first started, not saying you do it now, 
Were you ever like under the influence while doing any of these in the very beginning? No. <laughs> Damn, I, I don't not. believe you. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't no, believe no, no, I swear, I swear. Hey. I swear, I I'm swear. I'm just saying no. because I, I maybe you're nervous because your first cut, you're like, you don't want to mess up. You don't want to get a bad review. You don't like, you need something to take off the edge. No, you know what? The first clients, it was somebody I knew. Okay. Right? And then there was somebody, I had no idea who she was, but they referred her to me, right? And then and then I had another, like, the it was, my first day was three girls. You know they're going to comment, right? I they're know. <laughs> I know. No, 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 no. Kidding, they are kidding. still my clients. Okay, cool. To the day. I can say their names. Yeah. They are my clients. I just actually worked with one last weekend. Dope. So they're, they're, they've stuck by me. They've toughed it out, like. They believed in my... Wait, but now let me ask you. Why, me. why do you feel like it would be wrong? Because I've seen plenty of people go like with drinks you to a tattoo what? artist or a little high. Not a lot of high. Just a little <laughs> hey, high. like a little puff. But, but I'm saying puff. like, why, why would it be... No, it, it, it would matter. I get it. I get it matters. It. You know why? But, I but, feel you're not like po- but you're not poking someone with a needle. No, but but it is... You know what? A lot of like <laughs> people think that shit. Like <laughs> right. they're like probably thinking like, dude, maybe this girl smoke. I'm not gonna lie. I <laughs> I'm gonna say it. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> Back right. in my day, I would. I I I'm think, kidding. and it was like more like for for me to go to sleep. Okay. You know, so yeah. I was like, okay, I'm gonna smoke, go to sleep. It was never like I'm gonna. I got it for a while where I was like, okay, I'm hitting it during the day, Carla. You need to stop. So, and it's something I'm not. I'm not gonna like. It's natural. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna sound like Smokey. You gotta put this on it for me and you. <laughs> no. Um, We're not here to judge you. Yeah, We're just no, here no, to no, touch no, no. It, have a good so, time, promote business. So, yeah, no, no, no. Um, It was something like I would do it, but I, I knew that I could not be like that at work gotcha. or working with people because. I, as it is, my eyes are small as fuck. And so oh I, I when I do, dude, I'm not gonna say no, when I do smoke, my yeah. eyes get small and red. Like, yeah. I could never hide it from. She's gonna be like, why are my eyebrows so thin? She's gonna be like, girl, these eyebrows are dark. Like, <laughs> she didn't you take didn't the cap fuck off. me up. She didn't take the cap off. There's still- <laughs> Instead of looking her color, she looks orange. Like, oh. no. So I knew that I couldn't. Like, gotcha. So I, I, that, being that being in the this kind of industry makes you like grow. You have no other fucking choice. Cool. You truly don't, because I was very like traviesa. I was always. I'm sure you guys seen fighting, but that's in the past. <laughs> that's in the past, guys. That's in the past. Don't because test her a lot now. of the times, no, 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 no. A lot of the times, people bring that up still. Like they'll they'll be like, "Well, we know how you were. We know what you've done." Like. So if you know why do you keep testing me? <laughs> <laughs> Fool, I'm you were around. What I'm the hell? Around. Oh, and then it's like, you know what? They put it everywhere on social media. Ah oh, shit. Everywhere. Mm. Like it's on majority oh, of Snapchat. Yeah, like, yeah. you know, and it's fucking like, dude. <laughs> wow. And you know the first thing I do is call my mom. Mom to my mom. You know, I call my mom because it's like once it gets to her or she sees a video, and it's like, why were you doing this? And I and I'm not gonna tell you guys no, but when I started at the beginning of this, mm-hmm. I obviously I got in a fight at the bar, <laughs> but it was for a good cause. Okay, allegedly, uh, allegedly <laughs> it was for a good cause. The like, girl was hitting the owner, uh, they, and he's uh, a senor. Yeah, okay. like I don't know if you guys seen the owner, but yeah. he's like an older man, right? She's like bombing on his door. So it's justifiable. I called my mom right after. It was like two in the morning. My mom's like, w- are you going to jail? <laughs> I was like, no, girl. Like, I'm just telling you, the owner was okay with it. I'm going to Harvard, not Yale. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Yale? Yeah, it was crazy. Was my mom was just like. IVC. <laughs> no, yeah, my mom was just like, I, Carla, the problems you're going to get. And I knew in that moment, it was like, dude, you have a name to you now. You can't be doing things like that. Right. A lot comes with this. Imagine if it wasn't kicked by Carla. Kicked by Carla? (laughs) Fuck, man. Either way, it was with a K. (laughs) (laughs) One or the other. What do you want? You know, I used to have really bad road rage, right? Like I stopped. (laughs) And kind of have to because, like, we are in the eye of the public. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah, that's true. And there's times. I forget. And I was like. He's like, I forget. There's times, like, I'm literally, like, (laughs) flipping somebody off. You mother. And I was like, oh, shit. I go. 
What if they see me? Uh, they follow on our. You're gonna be on the crappy drivers in right Imperial Valley. I know right. this DJ. <laughs> Damn. He's yeah. fucking flipping me off on the road. <laughs> right. No, well, yeah, I well, learned how to drive. You know what? I gotta <laughs> learn to think that way because yeah. It's, no, no, right. no. You're Honestly, right. I. Right. It was like a switch in me. Like even my mom was like, "Girl, you're. This is my daughter." I was like, "Yeah." Like I, <laughs> and you know what? <laughs> yes. But because you know what, my my, I was taught that like, and that's like the one thing I want to break. Like now I have my first niece. You know, like she's a baby. Well, my little brother, um, he, and it's like, dude, we have to like end a lot of stuff here. Like I don't want to, I don't want her to carry on gotcha. how we were taught or like, I mean, certain things to a certain extent, but not like the bad stuff. Things yeah. that we shouldn't carry with us because it's not okay. Yeah. And that's how I was taught. Like, I was always on the defensive. Like, y no te dejes a nadie. Y no dejes que hablen de ti. Y de, te defiendes siempre. Like, man, it's kind of hard to do that. Now you can't do that. Now you got to just let them say what they're going to say and just stay quiet. Like, and and obviously it it happens a lot, a lot in this. Um, And I've learned just to, like, keep quiet. Like, they probably think I'm a fuck, but it's fine. <laughs> like, oh, mom, they really just let me be like that. Like, and then she was like, but it's fine. It, I see the growth in you. Like, even my friends notice, a lot of them. Like, because I was very, like, a hothead. Like, mm-hmm. my homegirl don't fight, but I do, girl. Don't be doing that. Like, <laughs> you know what? And it was like, damn, I can't do that no more. Now you're in the public, even like walking around anywhere. Like I can't even go to Walmart. Stopping at every, hey, 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 like, yeah, I can't be doing all that no more. So I'm on my best behavior these days. <laughs> yeah, you had, you you know, props to you, man. Yeah. I'm not there yet, but I'm working on it. It's, it's a lot. It's a, it's, a, it's a lot. It's a work in progress. It's a honestly, and it's taken me lots of time to be like this. So like. Did you ever have anyone to check you though? Like someone that you love, like, like you a, know what? Like, no, it took I, I, a I think friend. That's, I think that's what I need. Too. It took a friend. It took a friend, and it wasn't like a close friend. Eh? It was like a friend that's always like, when they see me post or they're like, "Dude, I'm proud of you." Like people that have seen me come along the way, right? And right. so he was just like, "Hey, dude, I seen what you did yesterday," and I was like, "What?" Mm. And he's like, "That's not okay." Like. You're doing something and you're making a name for yourself. Like, don't be known for that. Right. Don't be like, don't let certain things trigger you. Don't burn yourself. So a lot of the times now, like, mm. and I'm going to be honest, when I go out, I'm sober. <laughs> like when I go to 805, when I go anywhere in those type of like, yeah, because people don't know how to control themselves. True. Sadly. And they're like. So they'll be like, you're not going to drink. Like, no, because I have to, like, be calm and collective all the time and be the peacemaker. And I can't even enjoy myself because people don't know how to act. (laughs) It's crazy. I'm just like, dude, what's going on? Like, people just have some problems. (laughs) Se van y se desquitan. Yeah. So it's like, or maybe it, that's why you don't have any like um, bad reviews. That's, 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 hey, I'm just this is why you don't, <laughs> this is why you don't have bad reviews. Hey, this is why they don't say you're not you're bad. There you go. No, I'm but you know kidding. what? It's, it's <laughs> I've had one client in these four years that I've been doing this that she didn't like her makeup, but she was young. She's never worn makeup. But you have to learn how to take criticism when it comes to me. Like, if I do you, if I don't like it, I say, it. if I don't like it, you're not going to like it. Okay. So I have to like what I'm doing. Yeah. You, you show me, like, a vision, and you show me, like, your inspo, and we'll go from there. So when I, when I, the little niña, I knew when she sat on my chair, it was going to be something hard. They think, like, las que they want, like, a full extra glam. It's hard. No, it's always the ones that want the least amount mm. of it. It's always like, damn, well, how do I do that? You want to wear makeup, but look like you're not wearing makeup. What would you do different now? Um, Now it's like, it's because it changes as it's going. Well, I'm saying with the client like that. Like oh, no, well, I told her straight up, like, do you want me to do it over? Because we have time. Like, I can literally remove everything and mm-hmm. do it over. And she was like, her mom was like, no. Her mom was like, she's going to stay like that. And I was like, 
well, we can switch whatever she wants or whatever she doesn't like. Or she was, the mom was just like, no. And I was, but no, like I do accommodate to what mm. you would like. Like, cause this is, you're going to take pictures, girl. And you're going to be out there and yeah. I need you to be smiling and happy out there. <laughs> Not all upset because you're upset about something that mm-hmm. I can change. Cause it is anything that I, I do. It's fixable. Okay. So I do say that like, we can always fix it. I try not to make mistakes. No, no. <laughs> you know, I want to thank you for uh, for reaching out to us. I know. You know what? When I saw you guys, I was like, um, because somebody shared it, mm-hmm. and he was on here, okay. and I was like, dude, that's that's cool. Like, because he's from Raleigh and he's acting, so I was like, dude, that's like cool. Right. I feel like a lot of the times we're like from such a small town that it's like there's so many people with like such big dreams, mm-hmm. and I don't know. They don't. We obviously don't give one another credit for the effort that is put into what we do. I mean, there's a lot of even talent. to what you guys do because you're putting people out there, you know. And there's a lot of talent that people don't know about that people have made it out of here successful. Like I wish they would come back for, like you said, like career day to to show. Like we we have like famous DJs, we have famous baseball players. Recently, they inducted um Sorry, Romo. Romo, yeah, um Hall of Fame. For Brawley. Um, yeah. And I'm just saying, like, it, it's dope that they brought him back. But there's so many more people here that just don't get a light. And, yeah. um, I mean, we're, even we're, a, we're just on our way, too. Like, yeah, even a professional golfer. Yeah. Brawley. Is I, it? Uh, yeah. I'm um, like, golf? <laughs> because they, um, I think it was. <laughs> I'm over here just trying to go to Top Golf. Uh, uh, I oh, believe, shit. hey, Top Golf is a lot of fun. <laughs> is it? It's a lot of fun. And you know what? It's a stress reliever. You forget about everything that's going on. In the world. You there. know what? I I started doing women's softball league. I used to do it back in the day, and then they pulled me back in after eight years. Mm-hmm. I got hurt the first week. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> Almost snapped my ankle. Damn. I was like, damn, girl. In your mind, you, you were going to get there. I made it, though. <laughs> <laughs> so I do believe that it's stress me where sports is very like that. Yeah. But um, back to, yeah, he's... I guess they had an alumni type of dinner last week for um, Sergio Romo was here. He was one of them. Um, yeah, he's a professional golfer. Never knew. You know, there's so, like Jedi said, there's so many. There's a lot of talent out here that has made it. Shout out but, to Dynamic, too, man. Yeah. DJ yeah. Dynamic. Um, and we had... At the beginning of the show, maybe like with the year end of the show, uh, we had last name, and I don't want to butcher your name, Weiner. She's um costume designer. Ariel. Uh, Ariel. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, she, she's, uh, I'm talking about, she's worked on Fast and the Furious. She's worked on Spider-Man. She's worked on, she's from El Centro. Yeah, it's it's just it's um it's mind boggling of how much talent is out here and has made it, you know. So like I said, there is many job careers out there. Even like in our field, like um, we had Bernadette on here, mm-hmm. uh, YouTuber. Made I know I've seen a lot of, of like yeah, yeah, a lot of, and I'm like, dang. It's just like you said, the hustle. You just can't give up. Be more. And consistent. I feel like a lot, a lot of that is like the. That's not, like, pushed. Like, when you're in something that you're dedicated to, a lot of the times they're not... When you're jumping into it, you're not realizing how much hustle comes right. with it. Mm-hmm. Like, and you yeah. got to be motivated to stick to what you're doing. It's just like drugs. If you want to... No, <laughs> <laughs> you got to go all in. You got to go all in. <laughs> you're like... It's just like drugs. Like, dang. Just kidding, kids. <laughs> First I did a line, now I'm doing don't eight do balls. Don't do drugs. <laughs> yeah. oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> but it is like that. Like, Ask again later. Oh, wait, what's your ball? That, that one, right? Ask again later. Yeah. But it is something that it's not like so much hustle comes with it. Right. And then it's like people stick to their, you, they do their day job and then they want to do that like to start picking up. And then it's like, when do I stop doing this to just stick to, to this? That. Right. Yeah. It's been like that this year. It was just this, like this, 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 this summer, because right here, the summer is hard. Mm-hmm. 
Oh yes. yes. With makeup. Let me tell you girls. <laughs> but this summer I was surprised. I was like, dude, ¿dónde están las fiestas? <laughs> there was a lot of parties this year, like mm-hmm. weddings, parties. Uh just and I was like, dude, it's freaking 120 degrees, bro, and you're here sitting on the chair. I was like, let me spray you girl so you don't melt. <laughs> Cause it's me against the weather. Oh shit. But no, and it's like I have to stick to it. And I am. I'm gonna in my head I'm like I'm imagining when I'm on the red carpet. There you go. Hey yeah. Just put it out there. Yeah. I'm manifesting it. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely put it out there. Believe yeah. in it. Yeah. You know, like I said, you know, once again, you know, I thank you for reaching out. Um we're we could be opening another avenue for you. Same Me too. vice versa. Yeah. You know. Um, sure that's, and that's one thing that we have talked about in the past is that it's hard to get it's been hard to get females on our show. And you know what? Yes, when yes. I when I reached out, I saw there was like there's nothing but dudes. Yeah. I was like, damn. What are my chances? <laughs> yeah, you know, like, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna just go for it, like. But because I feel like, not that we're we're like underrated on in general, but there's a lot of like girls when they do like certain things and they don't like put pressure to stick to it. Mm-hmm. I feel like men are more motivated. Mm-hmm. Weirdly, mm-hmm. I feel like, I that's gonna sound crazy because. But men are more motivated in the aspect, like if he is the breadwinner of the house and he's thinking about his wife, his children, women, I mean, I'm sure they're thinking the same, but it's like, do you, are you willing to sacrifice so much? And it's like including time with your kids. A lot of stuff comes with doing certain, like opening your business. Mm-hmm. A lot of you... At the beginning, you can't just be like, vacations are over. <laughs> Little yeah. things are over. Like, it's just work, work, work. Yeah. And and guys, they're they're used to that. Like, and they're motivated. Like, and they're hustling. Like, they're hustling. They're, you'll see a man hustling. You're used to that. Like, guys, you're seeing a guy, like, I don't know. Let's, let's break the stereotype. Cause, yeah. Because even having you here, like, it, it means a lot to us because mm-hmm. maybe you can tell us from your point of view, is it like how you said, like, you hardly see any girls, you feel like we don't invite them? Or do you feel no, no, like, no, no. Like, maybe they're not open because we're guys. And that's what I feel. Like, I feel oh. like, and you're not going to believe, like, I, I have, obviously, my girlfriends, mm-hmm. but... I will be more like my guy friend, call him up and tell him, like, like, hey, dude, I'm going through this. But because I feel like sometimes they are more, like, in your... Girls are very, like... I'm going to say it. Sorry. We put our emotions a lot, like, instead of, like... They react on emotion, you know, rather than thinking logical. (laughs) That's like my friend. I don't know. Maybe yeah, because I don't know how to say. Because sometimes we we don't know how to talk to guys. Like we're, we're like, yeah, uh, we just suppress it and fuck yeah, fucking like, drink and then like yeah, road like, rage. And, and I then feel like girls go are looking for ghosts and and, and yeah. fucking dogwood and shit. Like, <laughs> and <laughs> aliens. Don't forget about and the aliens. aliens. Oh yeah, sorry, yeah. Didn't, didn't mean to offend you guys. Yeah. No, no, no. But you know, and I feel like it's something that it, if it's cool, like where you can co- co- what is it like collab collab. I did a live a guy doing my makeup. Oh wow! <laughs> so it's like I I feel like I'm open to things like that just mm-hmm. because it's like society kind of like I don't know they kind of like you're a guy you're a girl type of deal. I picture it like not now but back in the day it when, was like when, that when you'd lot. go to a barber shop and there, there's three guys and then there's the lady and you would wait for the for the guy even if the guy sucked. <laughs> Or I'm going to go sit on his chair. Yeah. La like, señora no me va de And see, like, now it's like you can break that barrier. Like, I always have women cut my hair. Yeah, yeah. You know what? Yeah. I, um, And I think it's, it's changing a lot. Mm-hmm. It's like everything is changing, and I feel like, I don't know. It's cool. Like, I did once a group, and there was a guy doing makeup. 
Okay. And it was the first time ever that I had seen that. Like she was judging guys. I was like, like, damn. She was like, oh. I was like, damn. It was damn. a wedding. Damn. Dude. Oh, and then pressure. you wanna what? They appreciate me that wedding. <laughs> Let me tell you. <laughs> they love me. <laughs> All right. They're my best clients. Dope. Um, but no, yeah. So I, I do, I honestly, I, I appreciate being on here and it's cool, like, because it's going to even be like, Carlos was on a podcast with DJs. <laughs> DJs, there you go. Right? With the DJ. Yeah. Yeah, so it's like, it's different. It's very different. And it's crazy because we are in the same, like, how you say we're in the same industry, like. I knew we would hit it off because we are. It's just, we, we, we got to remember that. We're, yeah. we're in the same. Yeah, we're in the same. same. And it is true, like. We're obviously always doing parties. Yeah. yeah. And your guys' work is always on the weekends? Yeah. Kind yeah. of. Do you guys do week weekdays? Or well, no? yes and no, but we prep. Like, okay, let's break that too. Okay, <laughs> so yes, we DJ, like, let's say an example, a wedding on Friday and the club on Saturday. Mm -hmm. But we still have to prep during the week for the wedding yeah. and, and even the club. You know what? Yeah. So it... it a client thinks like, oh, I'm only going to have the DJ for four hours. But shit, we're prepping surprise dance mixes. We're doing um, slideshows. We're doing like like getting certain songs that aren't downloadable on YouTube sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like it's, it's a lot of work. Yeah. It's a lot of work. But like we only charge you accordingly to you guys the four hours. Like We, we got to break that standard, too, because sometimes we put in like 16 hours and only getting paid for four. Yeah. yeah, and you know what? It's good that you say that because a lot of the times when you're doing like what you're doing, they don't realize you're still working to get to work. Mm -hmm. yeah, the, <laughs> I the, do that too, guys. Well, I, I got to clean the brushes, the sponge. Like, depending yeah. on what, what, you, what they ask for, you get, you're get prepping all that. Too. Yeah, and it's so a lot of you, like. So when you get there, you're like, you're ready. It's a lot of checking what's missing. Yeah. And there's, I, there's been many times where they tell us like, you guys charge that much. And you're like, yeah, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Why? And it's, Is and there it, a and it's just like, you know, but like I said, we're we're usually one of the first ones there, right? And the last ones to leave. And the last ones to leave. Yeah, yeah. that that's like, and that's something that honestly, I give it to DJs because I know entran todos bien y salen todos pedos <laughs> y no se quieren ir, quieren una canción más. And you guys are like, cut that song in half. We gotta go. <laughs> Hey, the last song. I mean, so, yeah. I mean, sometimes it's pretty lit, and you don't want to leave either. Like, yeah. But but do you guys ever get like where they're like, "Oh, here's a beer, here's a plate of food," all the time? What, you mean like at a wedding or or in, in general, or? wherever you guys go? Yeah. yeah, yeah, we'll eat. I mean, look at us. <laughs> <laughs> he said, "Come on, man, right. I'm gonna turn down food. You're yeah, crazy. Yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> you know, I don't want to be rude." <laughs> <laughs> He's like, matter of fact, give me two. Yeah, I want, can, one can I get a plate to go? Can I get one to go, please? I've had a long shift. I remember taking a whole pizza one time. They had like a shitload of Little Caesar pizza. They're like, do, do you want a, you want a box? And I was like, I mean, it's funny. Do I? <laughs> Thank you. Sometimes they're throwing us like, oh, do you want to take the? I'm going to take that box of cupcakes. And I'm like, not the hey. cupcakes. I, I go, it's because I look like this, right? <laughs> you know? I know. But uh, but it is like that. Like, so I do give you guys that. Like, I feel like you guys are very, like, I'm not going to say, like, they don't give you guys enough credit for what you do. Thank I, you. Because you guys are really, like, the main. Without you guys, there would be no party. You got to wow. think of that. Like, if you don't show up, what are they going to play? They're going to put... The cousin on the mix. There you go. <laughs> Playing some crazy yeah. stuff. Definitely. No, but it is true. It is true. Yeah. I was like, damn. I, w I would probably not. That we had um, a party and then I was over there trying to be with the little. Oh, it was yeah. a speaker, eh? a speaker. And they, and it has like the little DJ thing. I was like, dude, you guys, I think you can make it. And they were make like, sit your ass down. <laughs> We were like, I oh, could do this. We were already dream. like drunk. Imagine drunk. And it has like that. Like if it has a Believe drum. it or not, that's the best time to learn. Dude, but I could not like. It was funny. I was like was pressing one, the drums. Uh, you couldn't even hear the song. Oh, I was shit. fucking with all the buttons. I was like, dude. So <laughs> you, I was like, in. so you guys don't like it? They're like, Carla, sit down. 
Then I literally have videos of my family like doing the fucking. I was like, dude, that's crazy. Imagine DJs. Ya me hubiera estresado con tanto botón. I want to see the video now. <laughs> right? <laughs> Send me the video. Dude, I am. I am. We were really drunk, okay? Mind you, everybody in that household, except the little kids, you know? Okay. But everybody was like, well, we're all of age. You There's only two you. little ones that are like three. Send him the video. He's going to add it in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're going right to have to put it. Here. This I'm is the video shit. Here. Dude, and, and no. And then we have like one of my nephews is not... <laughs> One of my nephews is on the on the light switch. The other one's on oh, this shit. side. And they're literally going el, like this. And then we're like. Dude, you had a team. It was crazy. That's, we get crazy. When the dope. family gets drunk, Good anything Good goes. Times. Good times. I comida, botana, everything. And you're just like, damn. The next day you wake up and you're like, why do I feel like this? And you're going through, <laughs> why, why, you're going like, through your gallery and it's like, dude, well, we were freaking crazy. <laughs> we thought we were. I'm surprised, uh, low key, that they did not call the cops. Because oh, I was like, damn, los vecinos, they probably fucking hate everybody <laughs> right here right now. <laughs> it was crazy. Oh, I was like, dude, it was loud. I was like, this is not, this is not okay. <laughs> if I was a neighbor, I'd be like, call the cops. <laughs> Shut the party down. It was like three, four in the morning. Damn. damn. The little kids all like still running around. I'm like, dude, there's no off button on these kids. No, um, but um, I know. But Carla, thank you for coming on the Lazado podcast. We definitely appreciate you reaching out. Like I said, and um, yeah, it has um, been a time. It definitely <laughs> has, you know. Like, um, let them know where they can follow you. Yes, you guys can follow me on uh, in Cake by Carla. Is it on or in? That what? sounds. Huh? He said like, what? what? <laughs> my pages is that uh -huh. what is my pages? Cake by Carla on Instagram and Cake by Carla on Facebook. Gotcha. Okay. Be sure to book in advance. <laughs> yeah, remember she's not available till after December, guys. Hey. Low key December fourteen. There you go. Uh, and it. I only have one weekend off in all this time. Damn. Because my niece turns one. Oh. Uh. And I'm party coordinator there too. <laughs> oh, so you're still working? Damn. I'm still working on top of everything. Right. It's like, dude, I don't no days off. None. So That's not even a day off. I've been planning this birthday party already like two months. <laughs> yeah. But once again, Carla, thank you again for coming thank on. Thank you guys you. for having yeah, me. Definitely. All right, you guys. Uh, Peace out.